Metroidvania games have been making a slow comeback over the last few years with games seeking that retro feel of exploring giant labyrinths to unlock abilities to progress further into these mazes and find all the hidden nooks and crannies. Last week another game joined the long list of successful Metroidvania games called Guacamelee from the studio, Drinkbox Studios, who developed the indie game series Mutant Blob Attacks. Does Guacamelee offer something new to this series of games? or does it stand apart with its own unique style and gameplay? The story sees Mexican June Akut, sorry about the pronunciation, who has tasked himself with saving the El Presidente's daughter from Carlos Calcar, an evil skeleton whose soul was taken by the devil after he made a deal with him. But it doesn't go well for June because Carlos kills him in one hit. Death isn't final and you soon are bestowed with the power of the luchador after finding a mask which will help you tackle the hordes of undead and demonic creatures Carlos has at his disposal. You'll soon discover that the living world has its own counterpart, the dead world. Also similar, but with its own layout of the level, platforms which weren't in the living world can be accessed through the dead world. Lava which blocked your way in the dead world turns into harmless water in the living world. This gives the illusion of two giant worlds, but there are only slight differences in the world and it comes more into play with the puzzle platforming part of the game. At the beginning of the game you can only change it when you enter portals but later on gain abilities to change it with a button press that opens the game up so much more. That doesn't make it any easier since the platforming becomes insanely more trickier the further you get into the game. This game reminds me of Super Meat Boy because of how quick it was, the tightness of the controls and of course if you fail you instantly respawn. No load screens, which is great because you will fall to your death a lot. As with any Metroidvania style game, you will unlock new abilities for June and these all relate to movement and attack. From double jumps, running up walls, body slamming, rooster uppercuts, just to name a few. All the abilities will come in handy to progress you further into the world and also let you gain access to previously blocked off areas. This is where all the secrets are located to increase your maximum health and stamina which will let you perform more special moves in combat. You will also find money from killing enemies and in hidden chests which will let you unlock more abilities and stats improvements for June. The combat in Guacamelee is fun with new elements being introduced all the time, from new enemy types, having to travel between the living and dead will to hit them and then shields which can only be destroyed by certain attacks. The only downfall is that there isn't many enemy types but that can be forgiven because of the way the game uses the environments to deploy the enemies and the abilities they come equipped with changes in each combat arena. The game controls are quick and easy to pick up and there is a training mode to try all the different abilities you unlock but by the end of the game the combos you've learned will be thrown to the side because of the way the game presents the enemies. There are 5 boss fights in total and each offers a fair challenge on your first playthrough till you identify the patterns and abilities. Each boss will test the abilities you've learned up to this point, if you've not mastered them by this point you will die. But again death isn't a major issue and you'll quickly be thrown back into the fight soon enough. The only thing I can fault the game for is the placements of the button commands on the controller. By the end of the game you've unlocked so many abilities it can be overwhelming what order to press the buttons on the controller. In particular the sections where you have to cling on to moving platforms and wall jump at the same time. The visual art style of Guacamelee sets it apart from other 2D side scrollers, from the character design to the world itself. With two distinctive backgrounds with the whole living and dead world, each has its own unique environment. It's a blast to explore and then you've got all the references and memes scattered throughout the game, in particular the main town hub that you'll return to after each area. It's a treat to see all these internet and gaming references blending in so well into the world as well. They do peter out near the end of the game, it would have been better if they staggered it throughout the whole game. Musical is phenomenal and suits the Mexican environments and again the living and dead versions of each musical tracks are a nice twist to each song. There is no voice work but it doesn't really matter. Each of the characters you encounter have very amusing scripting as well, especially the luchador master who teaches you new moves after you destroy his shrines that are similar to something you would see in Metroid. As you can tell the game is full of charm and polish, you'll have a big grin on your face throughout the whole game. With great gameplay, tight controls and an amazing style and personality of all its own, Guacamole stands out as a PS3 PlayStation Vita classic. It's a short but delicious piece of gaming content and doesn't overstay its welcome with over 4 hours of gameplay to complete it. That doesn't include all the collectibles in the game to find as well, and there is a ton. It also has a co-op mode which wasn't tested for this review, but from what I've been told it's fun but gets particularly tricky when both players are trying to do the time platforming at the same time. Sony has made this available as a cross-platform game as well. So if you buy it on the PlayStation 3, you'll get it for the PlayStation Vita as well. The co-op ally can also use the Vita as a 
second controller on the PlayStation 3. It's currently on the PlayStation Store for £9.99 British pounds and $14.99 in the US so it's a bargain during this drought of games. I highly recommend you play this game if you like tight platformers and 2D beat-em-ups.